Now, just I came down, just as I was coming down, I was thinking, oh, holy moly, the weather. Like, it's suddenly, it, this is the first time I felt this is a sort of a winter evening, which in a way is a great thing because, you know, Christmas should be about kind of fireside and, and you know, the dark coming yes, in. And, 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 and especially I always th- think of uh, Christmas as a time to read good books. And, and, and you're sort of blessed in that you have a particularly good children's book. Uh, uh, doing the rounds at the moment. I, I only first became aware of it when The Guardian recommended, which is a, a wonderful thing for a major oh, newspaper to, to give you a slap on the <laughs> back and you know, talking about its humour and they just uh, seem to love it. Um, I should ask, so the, the title of the book is Owl, Bat, Bat, Owl. Yes. And it's a, it's a wordless book and it's kind of in a way, I suppose, you're taking uh, a, a people on a journey to see how the world looks from, uh, this topsy-turvy world looks for a bat upside down is yes. part of the appeal. Oh, where, where did all this uh, beautiful um, uh, kind of uh, imagination about this particular subject, where did it spring from? Was there a seed? Um, there's, I have two older books that have been following the same story, if you like. Right. This is the very first time I've tried a book with no words, so I've paired it right back. Right. Uh, the owls are nice and smug on their branch in the tree, <laughs> and uh, along come the. So they're Greystonians then, I presume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Everything's a metaphor in kids' yes, books. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and the bats, uh, if you like, are refugees. They're looking for somewhere to, to Co- go. Coolers. <laughs> I knew it. Oh, maybe further afield. <laughs> Not Newcastle. Uh, Newtown. Oh no. no. <laughs> well, sorry. Uh, yes, I was interrupting uh, that. <laughs> and they they come and land on the bat, uh, or on the are tree right. in the middle of the day, and um, the owls are horrified. Well, mammy owl is horrified. The baby isn't so horrified. Baby spots a potential pal amongst the bats, but neither mom is having any of that. So it's only when the wind blows and everything literally goes topsy-turvy that the mums realise maybe there's more to life than uh, ah. worrying about who your neighbours are. And the, the trick of, of, of wordless comedy, you know, in, in movies, you know, you, you talk about Chaplin and, and then, you know, France, you, the good old uh, uh, Hulot and, and then obviously Mr Bean in recent times for a lot of people. It's, it's actually very challenging because to get, you know, a, a, like I would say, a, you know, drama worked up or, or you know, just true movement images yeah. it can be um it can be quite a challenge and i don't know whether it, it, it you, you felt at times it was a whole new muscle that you had to flex to figure out how do i go from a to c and i need to f- figure out what b is just so people i definitely think this is as i say my third go at this particular storyline right and i think it's because i treated it almost like it was a stage set yeah everything stays and the and the owls and bats are actors so it's all about their f- faces it's all about their eyes uh, the expressions you're reading their body language you're reading their faces so there's loads to read um, visually uh, and there's there's not a lot of stuff going on around that's going right. to confuse you it's very much about the little actors and in w- the books so. would that have been i don't know i suppose every piece of art can can come at different speeds and, and sometimes it, like a great song is only three minutes uh, it takes and other times It'll take Leonard Cohen a few years to chip away at the song yeah. he loves the most. I don't know for you whether this was a, a quick or, or slow process. Are you talking about months or years? Or um, the the idea for this I sketched out really quickly, but that first time I had a go at it was 20 years ago. Wow! So you know it it depends on which way you're going to look at it. Right. Yeah, it came out onto the page very clearly this time, sure. uh, and I've wanted to do a wordless book for ages, and I didn't actually sit down and think this is a wordless book it just came out that way but on, on the other hand I know it's been gestating in the brain for god knows how long you know it's so um, of your own history now would this be I don't know if this is sort of a huge leap forward in, in regard to your career whether you've had you know success before like this I'm not, I, I don't know I, your career. I would have yeah. uh, had a few books along the way that were more successful than the others I mean right. I've had books published in different countries before and right. worked with American publishers I have a book called There which won a big award here the CBI award a couple of years ago and it would sell very well in the States oh, it's, fantastic. A, it's not really available here anymore but it's I did hey, see, I, I knew all this just by, you know, just pretending I don't know. <laughs> just so it gives you something to say, because it sounds very <laughs> yes. smug if I say it all. <laughs> yes. so just let's not let get confused here. I knew all this just okay. before you said that. Okay. But that's kind of wonderful then, because um, for, for a town that's well known for its authors, and we, we did hit this uh, strange little kind of title of being the most 
kind of self-published authors in 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 the country. I didn't know that. Which is which is a little bit like the you know we've got a town with with the most amount of people with a little shop because they've got spare time and a little bit of cash in their hands. <laughs> you know, it's not always necessarily reflected in in the work, but it's great that we do kind of have that sort of town that the people do feel inspired to write. What 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 about you? Where did your inspiration come from? Was it a, a childhood kind of obsession? Was it something that came uh, later? Or? Oh, I'd be drawing. I mean, I was four when I said I wanted to be an artist when I grew up, so that was uh, never changed. Right. The writing I'd have been doing since I was a kid too, so it's right. always been there. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a terrific thing. Yeah. I mean, to, and to be, I'm sure that little four-year-old would be delighted to know that. Oh, you can actually do this when you're a big, you know, adult yes. as well. It doesn't yeah. have to be that you give it up as a, some kind of childish dream. But no. that, that, was there a point when that became obvious that okay, I, this is actually my career I can do this you know uh, as a, as a, as I, a I was always very focused on it right. and I suppose my parents didn't try to dissuade me they God bless went them. with it yeah. uh, even though you know they did warn me I wouldn't make a lot of money you know that kind of yeah. thing but they did back me and support me in doing art so which back in the 70s wasn't you know wasn't a light thing for parents to do it is still a, a very tiny percentage of, of artists will make a, a, a very good living from, from either the music or the writing or uh, any kind of aspect of it. But there are those who, who suddenly flip over because of either a movie rights are bought up or it just becomes the book. I mean, is that something that you, you're you kind of, a, I don't know if you, if you, if you dare say, well, I, I, you know, I'm chasing that a little bit or whether it's just you don't want to think in those terms that that kind of success where suddenly uh, it's... Uh... Well, I, I mean, we have to live, we have to yes, eat. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, sure, everybody would love to have one book that would maybe support them um, right. so that they can relax and do whatever they want with their, their other books. Uh, and, you know, I know people who've had a book that maybe has bought their house for them or supported right. them in some way. Um, and that's, sure, that's the yeah. dream. <laughs> <laughs> now, I should say that we, we'll, we'll certainly put links in for this. I think it's a, it's a lovely... Uh, Obviously, a very lovely book, and I think um, you know it'll be just a beautiful for Christmas, a beautiful time to to grab one. If you had a favorite book uh, when it comes to, especially kind of childhood, when it comes to like a book that's sort of in that vein, I don't know if there is such a thing that you would always a go-to book that sort of just does it for you every time. Um, a children's book. Yeah. Uh, I loved the Laura Ingalls Wilder books, the ah. Little House on the Prairie books, right? Which were fabulous books, uh, not the saccharine. TV, TV series, series right? Um, <laughs> I loved them. There were about seven of them, right? Uh, based on reality, like Laura is the Laura in the book. Ah, sweet. Um, so. Well, I'll put a link to that too because I just think uh, uh, art is always. I just think I love the idea that you pass on something that meant a lot to you. It's usually can you know kind of it's the best sort of recommendation you can get is, is somebody who loves that particular area has certain things that just may do it for them, chances are it's probably going to be brilliant. So, yeah, nice and well done. That's a that beautiful, beautiful achievement. And uh, we'll keep an eye on you now. And, and from now on, of course, as I said, I knew everything about you, <laughs> but I will certainly know more about you next time, just so you know. <laughs>